Good evening and welcome to the January 3rd Board of Education meeting. Can I get a motion to resume open session? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> the Board of Education met at 4.30 in closed session to review non-public tuition, finance department updates, negotiations, HR report, the board handbook, and ethics panel opening. Thank you. Oh. Can um, I get a, movement, a move to uh, approve the agenda? Make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Get a, um, uh, someone, a motion to approve the minutes from the closed session of December the 6th. Make a motion we approve December 6th closed session minutes. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, can I get a motion to approve the minutes from the open session of December the 6th? Make a motion we approve the uh, December 6th open session minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Ready? Dr. Salins, <laughs> yes. <coughs> Good evening. <coughs> the best part of the meeting are recognitions. And this, this evening we're going to start with the Energizer Bunny Award. This award is given to a staff member or volunteer who keeps on going. It's sponsored by Bayview Financial. <coughs> That's okay. With Mr. Chip Birdingham and Mr. Wayne Humphreys. I don't think they were able to be here this evening, but they sure are very supportive and we thank them for that continued support. The Jan January Energizer Bunny Award has been nominated by Rob Watkins, who is the principal of Sellersville Middle School, Phil, please come forward. And also assistant principal, Becky Berberich, she'll please come forward. So, so unfortunately, the January Energizer Buddy is um, under the weather this evening, but we're still going to recognize him this evening, and that is John Schultz. Um, so he's unable to be here, but we hope he's getting a speedy recovery and, and feeling better by tomorrow. Um, but what had some very good things to say about him that I'd really like to share at this time. Mr. Schultz serves as the IEP chairperson for Sellersville Middle School. His primary responsibilities are behind the scenes and include compliance and special education and 504. But he does so much more. John leads his department with a hands-on and positive approach. He leads by example. You will find John collaborating with his team, pulling students for support, serving as a mentor to students, and participating in the numerous engagements events that Sellersville Middle School hosts. He is so deserving of the Energizer Bunny Award because he never stops and always goes above and beyond in supporting the staff and students at Sellersville Middle School. We are fortunate to have Mr. Schultz at Sellersville Middle School. So congratulations to him. <laughs> well, we're going to move on to the Spirit Awards. Uh, we have two Spirit Award winners for the month of January. So the Queen Anne's County Public School Spirit Award, this award is given to an individual or individuals who embody the spirit of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Again, nominated by Mr. Watkins. And the January um, first Energizer, I mean, first Spirit Award is Beth Brownlee. If she'll please come forward. Congratulations. Mr. Watkins has some very nice things to say about you. Mrs. Brownlee is a sixth grade science teacher at Sellersville Middle School. She is passionate about environmental literacy and serves as the chairperson of the Green School team. In that role, she leads the charge in getting Sellersville Middle School certified as a green school and is currently guiding them through the recertification process. She operates a very popular student club called the Green Team, with teach which teaches environmental literacy through engaging activities, which includes maintaining the environmental areas around the campus. She partners with local entities to bring amazing opportunities to students. With the support of sixth grade students, she raises terrapins 
in her classroom and then organizes a field trip to Poplar Island to release them into the wild. She partners with our engineering teacher to take students to an engineering challenge at University of Maryland at College Park. She works with Echo Hill to bring grant dollars to Sellersville Middle School to support field trip opportunities. She also partners with the Sultana to organize field trip opportunities for students and an amazing professional development day for staff. Mrs. Brownlee truly embodies the spirit of Sellersville Middle School and is so awesome. Congratulations. Spirit Award winner has been nominated by Becky Berberich, the assistant principal at Sellersville Middle School. And the second Spirit Award winner for the month of January is Crystal Mattis, if she'll please come forward. And congratulations to you as well. Miss Mattis, or as we finally call, fondly call her, Miss Crystal, comes in every day with a smile on her face and a positive attitude. She is flexible with her schedule and willing to help out anywhere. No matter where she floats around the school, you will hear students enthusiastically greet her and wave her way. We are so lucky to have someone so good with students, so willing to help out, and so full of energy. You rock. <laughs> The last award this evening is the Shining Star Award. We have several Shining Stars for the month of January, and these awards are presented to individuals in the school system who shine. Obviously, uh, recommended by, nominated by Mr. Rob Watkins. Um, so we have the first one, I'd like for our counselor, Sandy Sabori, to come up, please. And also, counselor Kelsey Aber. and social worker, Bree Lentil. <laughs> Secretary, Lindsay Coleman. <laughs> and last but not least, our very own assistant principal, Becky Burridge. <laughs> <laughs> so Sandy, Kelsey, Bree, Lindsay, and Becky make up the dynamic student support team at Sellersville Middle School. Together, they are a team that provides services to many, many students each and every day. They are cheerleaders for the social emotional well-being of our students and are advocates for strong and positive mental health. As a team, they maintain the advisory block, which runs from 720 to 748 each morning. On most mornings, students are engaged in lessons and activities targeting career, academic achievement, and social emotional learning. Additionally, this amazing team works hard to support productive relationships between students by routinely addressing bullying, kindness, and engagement. Sadlersville Middle School is fortunate to have this team of tireless educators to support the varied needs of our students. Kudos to this team for creating a warm and inviting place for students to seek support. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Okay, we've got board involvement. Who would like to start? Sure, so welcome back everybody. I hope uh, everybody got some quality time over the holidays. I'm sure it was well-deserved. Happy New Year. Um, thanks to anyone and everyone that held down the fort over the holidays in the schools or here at the central office. Uh, very much appreciated. And uh, we're on the other side now and going into the second half of the 23-24 school year. And so I wish everybody the best of luck. Yeah, welcome everybody. Hope they had a good holiday with their family and loved ones. Uh, got to spend a couple days at uh, concerts at the elementary schools in Centerville. That was very entertaining. And also uh, spent a couple games at the Jody High basketball tournament at Queenians County High School, which was uh, fun to attend. Since they all left, I'll say it anyway, but I just want to give a shout out to Sellersville Middle School. They did an amazing job for their strings and band concerts. It was amazing. <laughs> okay, I just want to welcome everyone back to, it was a great holiday and I hope everyone else had a great holiday as well. Okay. Yes, I guess we just have the one. So yes, Ms. Forte, what you got for us? Okay, so for the month of January, um, on January 4th, we have our MCAP testing. It's going to begin and continue through January 11th. On January 15th, schools will be closed to all students and staff to celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. On the 17th and 18th, um, final exams will be given within or with a 1 p.m. dismissal time, and quarter two is going to end on the 18th. On the 19th and 22nd, schools will be closed to students, and both days will be professional development days for the staff. We also have tons of sporting events this week. Today we had our JV basketball girls playing at Gunston at 4 p.m. Our swim team was at the Centerville YMCA versus Gunston at 3 p.m. Um, our wrestling team was in Easton at 5 p.m. And the indoor track team was at Snow Hill. Um, tomorrow we have our girls and boys JV basketball teams at Cambridge. The girls will be playing at 4 p.m. and the boys will be playing at 5 p.m. And our girls and boys varsity basketball teams will be at home. Girls at 4 p.m. and boys at 5.30 p.m. as well. And then on Friday, we have our freshman boys bas or freshman basketball team sorry, at home versus Sussex Central at 3.30 p.m. And our boys wrestling team will be at Bohemian Manor at 4 p.m. And our ice hockey team will be at McMullen Ice Rink at 4.20 p.m. And that's all I have. Awesome. Well, sports. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Sayles. Yes, um, so everybody knows that December is a really, really busy month. Lots of opportunities to get in schools and see performances and um, just amazing things. But I do want to give a little shout out differently this time um, to Dr. Sprinkle. Um, PFI programming is up and running. Thank you for your leadership for that. Um, I, I really do appreciate all the effort. I, I just want to say a thank you to parents and staff members, their patients, um, as, we, as we move through kind of a tough time there. Um, but but there, we're in the swing of it. And a, and a big shout out to, to transportation, um, Mr. Murdoch and his staff. Uh, it, 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 it took everybody, uh, all hands on deck. And so thank you for your leadership. I'm super glad that PFY is up and running. It's what's great for kids. And, and I, I know that our students are really enjoying that. So. Great, and we will look forward to hearing from Dr. Sprinkles. Yes. I, I, that's one of my favorite things about the meetings is when she presents. It's her updates, very her good. Updates. Okay. So, thank you. So citizen participation, do we have any one signed up? <laughs> we do. Okay. We asked all speakers to keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster, including their telephone number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Comments about the actions or statements of indiv individual staff members are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or to the board president. If you have specific questions, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but asks as a courtesy to this board and our citizens that you show respect for all. Ms. Mitchell. Yes. Oh, I'm actually excited to be here tonight. Not at all. <laughs> well, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, I'm trying to stick to my script because, you know, I like to ad-lib. But um, so good evening. I'm Cecilia Mitchell. I'm 
the serving as the QACEA president. With me tonight is Glenn Galante, which I wanted to introduce to you. He is taking Art's um, seat at the negotiations table as our lead negotiator, so you may be hearing his name. Good evening, everyone. So Good evening. I wanted to introduce him. So I'm here tonight with, as you can see, members representing work sites from across our system. We start this new year looking ahead to the start of contract negotiations. Who could ever say they would be looking ahead to that? But we are. Our goal is similar to that of the board, to make QACPS a place where professionals want to work and want to stay. Preliminary planning discussions over the past weeks with Dr. Knoll, thank you, Dr. Knoll, have been amiable and productive. Ground rules have been agreed upon, which will provide improved transparency. The structure of proceedings has been revamped to improve participation of members and sharing of accurate and timely information to our members. A schedule has even been set. We have established three priorities. These priorities were developed with input from members, presented to members, and endorsed by members at every work site in the county. And they are salaries and compensation, health care, workload, and workplace safety. Additionally, starting some months back, we looked at our current contract through the prism of its alignment with the Maryland blueprint for, uh, or excuse me, the blueprint for Maryland's future. Our association has endorsed the ESP Bill of Rights, asking that our support professionals earn a livable wage. The calculation for a livable wage in Queen Anne's County is commensurate with the counties on the Western Shore. A large percentage of our support professionals are earning below a livable wage. Starting in mid-January and the months following, QACEA and the Board of Education negotiation teams will be meeting. As equal partners in the collective bargaining process, we are here tonight to affirm our intent to maintain a respectful and productive posture throughout negotiations. You can expect advocacy for our members in a deliberate and respectful way. Thank you for your time and attention. Happy 2024. And here comes my ad lib. So to keep it positive and productive, we're bringing snacks. So I just wanted to put that out there. So thank you very much. We're really looking forward to making some great progress for our system. And one more ad lib. Um, Dr. Salins and I recently, she invited me to go with her to Everside when the comptroller was here. And we had a little exchange of emails afterwards. And she stated how proud she is of the accomplishments that our school system has had, has made. And I wanna say the teachers and support staff share that pride and intend to maintain and increase the um, stature of our school system. So thank you very much and have a great new year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Too. Thank you. Oh, and here are all our peeps. Aren't they wonderful? <laughs> Yay. Yay. All right, Let's see, Dr. Kibler. <coughs> Good evening, President Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members and executive team, Dr. Matthew Kibler, Director of Accountability Implementation and Interim CFO. So tonight I just pre present to you uh, the monthly budget summary and uh, detailed summaries for the year. I'm happy to answer any questions. Well, most years we're in the second half of it, so we're making some adjustments, but uh, it looks good. That's correct. We're taking it easy on our interim. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> doing that, by the way. And your interim very much appreciates <laughs> that. <laughs> Thank you. It's a tough. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hitler. <laughs> okay, Miss Hickey. She. She's. Yeah. She. It's up for second read. There was yes. no. Oh, okay. There was no comment. Right. So she. Oh. Did, I didn't. I told her oh, not to be here just because there was no comment. Okay. Well, but if you do have any questions, certainly we can. Um, no, I didn't have right. anything. Did anyone have any Anybody questions have? about okay. the second read? Okay. What about Mr. Grow, the climate and the yep. new T? Oh, Mr. Grow. Oh, there. Oh, he's there hiding you are back in the there. back row. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Grow. Presenting. Oh, yeah. Just move your mouse and then it's at the bottom. Ah. Yeah. Got it. On its survey, it's at the top, at the top tab. It's already open for you. Got it. Three dots, present at the top right. 
And enter my tea, apparently. <laughs> Dr. Kilbar. Yes, yes. There you go. Got it. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> uh, President Bennett, Dr. Salins, members of the board, executive team. I'm John Groh. I'm the supervisor of accountability. And tonight I'm here to present the results of our climate survey and new teacher survey. So our purpose of our survey is, of course, to keep the pulse and check the climate throughout our district. Um, employees are asked on the survey about their work, their leadership, and communication throughout the district. Uh, this survey was given uh, the first two weeks of November. Uh, two surveys were sent out, school-based and then central office-based. Uh, responses were anonymous. Um, however, employees are um, asked to respond to their bargaining unit, their level in which they work, and then the length of their service also. Um, just gives us a better read of, of the data once, once, once answered. Uh, roughly a 55% uh, response rate, so approximately um, 500 responses. Uh, during the questions, it's based on a five-point Likert scale. So of course, um, as a county, you know, once you're looking through there's we're striving for that um, over, over the hump of that neutral, like into that four and five area where they're agreeing with, um, with, with the questions. So we're really looking to strive for that four area. Um, in those areas, they're categorized into four, which is climate and culture, feelings and perception of employees' own work, leadership, and communication. As you can see right there, that is the, uh, the profile of those three um, pieces that the uh, employees answered. And you can see the count and the percent of the bargaining unit, at what levels uh, each of the members work, and then how long they were in their current position. And as we go through the results, a lot of this, I'll do my best just to summarize. I'm not gonna like, read through all of it, sure. but I'll, I'll summarize through all of that for you. In the first one for climate and culture, uh, these questions were most, mostly based on um, questions about positive climate, um, culture of uh, respect among staff and students, um, belonging and, and feeling supported. So once we go through here, what you're gonna see right there is at the top, that red one is gonna be all of those numbers right there are the averages. So the one at the top is all of your averages. So we're just under that four, like you almost got there with that. Um, and then all the way at the bottom in red, that little asterisk, um, I put the uh, res uh, responses from last year also. So you can tell it went down just a little bit from a 4-1 to a 3-9, but then it gives us opportunity to go through um, each of those breakdowns to see exactly where we are too, so to see what, where we could actually look at. For employees' own work questions, this is based on uh, responsibilities and expectations, um, opportunities to make decisions and participate um, in opportunities throughout the district, um, receiving help, um, having the resources that they need, everything um, for their own work, of course. And there you can see, um, we're just over that four into the four two, which actually came up from last year from a four two one to, to a four two nine, and then all the way down through just over that four. So. Um, a nice response there um, with employees' own work. The leadership questions um, are based on kind of the, the three with school administrators, district supervisors, and executive leadership on the support that they're giving and the clear expectations uh, throughout the district. And there again, we're um, at that four area um, up from a 3.9. Um, so again, kind of staying steady, but still right where we want to be in, in, in those areas. And then as you go down through the different uh, breakdowns, you can see exactly where the different levels were. There are communication questions also um, based on uh, open communication and two-way communication between the schools and the district. And that was just under that four, almost hit the four mark right there, but um, definitely up from a 375. Um, so really working on, on the communication. Communication is always um, a big aspect, especially in our, in our business. And the next steps on those is um, taking this, really looking at those breakdowns, um, helps us in, uh, work with our strategic plan, um, our superintendent roundtables, and our school system improvement committee. Um, so that's where a lot of that we can go back to and, and pull from. 
I'm going to pause there in case they have any questions. Absolutely. I just have one, do you, and, and you probably weren't prepared for it, but do we know how many responded last year? I know we had about a 55% response rate this time. Do you remember? It was just higher than that. I think it was right at about six. It was just, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, which which this one, I think it was just under 60%. Okay. We were like a 50, little above okay, 50. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Anything else? Well, I think, you know, I, I do you think 50, 60% is a good response? How do we get, I mean, I'd like to get it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew you were never going to get 100, but right. it is a not a captive group, but it's not like you're sending out to parents and a wide variety of things. I mean, this is right here in our school system. I'd, I'd love to see that get higher, you know, up to the mm -hmm. 70, 80 percent. Right. And I don't know if I read into it. Some of them just aren't engaged or are so satisfied. I don't know what, you know, I don't know. It's just sure. more people tell us good or bad. It helps make decisions. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. sure. Frankly, a, a voluntary response survey, anytime you do something like this and you're keeping it anonymous, so we're not tracking emails, so I'm not, we're not targeting follow-up, it's mm -hmm. all blanket so that it does remain completely anonymous. Anything around the 50% mark is, is great and we, and mm -hmm. frankly, getting it higher than that without that more targeted follow-up would be pretty hard to do. Um, you know, really big companies, if they're getting five, 10%, in uh, voluntary response surveys, they're happy. So I mean, something like this for us, it shows our people care, it does take time to do. Um, so I'm really thrilled with the 50% response rate, frankly. I, I just look at like, you know, being all professionals and all in here for the same reason, the more that it just helps everybody, you know, that's all I'm, and you're probably right, 50% of people yeah. probably is a good number. But. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, the, the only, I mean, the only true way to, to kind of keep getting it even harder is if try to sit people in, which we wouldn't do, sit people in a room and say, do the survey mm -hmm. right now. I mean, that, that's one way I've had success with that kind of stuff before. No. Or if you track the email responses, we wouldn't track what they said, but we watch who does respond and, and don't, and then follow up with those email addresses that haven't responded, but we don't want to do that. No, I, 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 you know, I, think it's I think the voluntary thing is the way to go. If you want to do it, be part of it. If you don't want to do it, then... You get the most genuine response. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to say I was happy with the communication, how much it came up, because I think we remember last year we talked about how that was our lowest, and mm -hmm. and so that was good to see that come up, because the rest of it, yeah. if you have that communication, can be brought up as well. Right. When you have the communication. Yeah, communication is so always nice the hardest, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the, the new teacher survey. Um, so as you can see, keeping it consistent, there was just over a 50% rate for that, um, but there was 33 teachers. Um, that responded to this. Um, and these questions um, were basically, you know, tailored to, to the new teacher looking for support from administrators, other teachers, looking for that, uh, at, that coaching and that sense of belonging and support um, throughout their first year. And there you can see it just all in one because there wasn't as many mm -hmm. um, as they went through, but you can see many um, over that four and just around that four mark of those questions lowest ones there just under four being around like the instructional coaching and being a new teacher with all the new things and that's something that that we can take back and really look at what we're doing with our with our coaches and how we're structuring that and i think too we have to remember that our new staff most of them were very seasoned i think we had 11 that were brand new out of the gate so if I'm a more seasoned staff member or coming with 20 years experience, I'm not necessarily going to need that level of engagement. So that, that may be what skewed it slightly. Sure. I'd be interested to see, you know, other years, if we had that historical data, if all new teachers that were first year compared to all staff that has some tenure would made a difference. I don't know. Right. And that's but, what's great about this. It just opens up all those conversations. It does. To take Absolutely. To yeah. Do, do we need to look at how we structure our onboarding or anything as it relates to differentiation for new versus those that have so because they still need something. I mean, coming to Queen Anne's County right. is different than being in another county, but you know, we have Schoology, so do our other districts. If they, do they need the same level of training? And that's some good questions that we can And can that's where we can this. go back and really look at but those questions where it's one through four and four through 11 in those, right. in those breakdowns of years. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Because yeah, I think that's a very good, because this year I saw more seasoned teachers yeah. coming mm. 
joining our group from different areas mm -hmm. to come to Queen Anne's County than I've ever seen before. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, I we, agree. We didn't, yeah. So when you say a new teacher, they're new to Queen Anne's, but they're not, you know, they're coming. Do I mean, they need some the of them same came level? With right. 10 mm -hmm. and 15 years experience, mm -hmm. which is, a, is either we're doing something right or somebody else is doing something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would like to add, like, this new teacher survey is why we went from last year's school calendar to this year, the three new teacher days to the four days, because that was feedback we got. Uh, from from the survey and the comments that we received and, and we didn't receive any comments this time that said we need we need more days so for now at least it looks like that four days uh, was kind of the magic was it number. was adequate right for them to feel like they could get onboarded before everybody else comes on board yeah and you're Good pushing point. right into our, my next slide where that's oh. the feedback that we're <laughs> doing like looking at no it's perfect just looking at the, yeah. the schedule for orientation and making those adjustments on, on how we're going to um, you know target that for sure. I had a question about the two open-ended questions. Did you guys have any patterns or was there any theme that came out of responses from the open-ended questions? Um, I, I think it was more along the lines of what Dr. Salins mm -hmm. was talking about there with, with the coaching where um, they would like to see kind of a, a, a different approach to that, whether, whether it was going to be um, all together or kind of differentiated Thank to you. where they were. Yeah. A lot of time was like if, if it's been on Schoology or if it's been on Power School or learning the new systems, they've been using it for 10, 12 years, and it's kind of a waste of a day for them. Thank you thank for you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. It's Absolutely. difficult. Yeah. Surveys are difficult. You put yourself out there, right? Yes. I mean, this is something yes. we don't have to do that we bring mm -hmm. to the table, and so. But we need to know, good yes, or bad. You need right. to know so that yeah. you can make changes. And so, I appreciate the people who did participate. Encourage you to continue to participate. Know that it is anonymous. We just get this very surface level that helps us to make some better decisions for the district. So, sure. thank you. All right, thank Thanks, you. John. Thank you. Thanks. Dr. Kibler. Call me off guard for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, let's go back to that expenditures report. Yeah, right. You do have a question. <laughs> nope. Uh, so uh, tonight what I'm just here is just providing a list of policies that were reviewed by the appropriate offices um, and just reaffirmed for another four years. Uh, nothing that requires a vote. As you know, you all, the public, our faculty, our staff can ask for a policy to be reviewed at any time. But we have gotten ourselves back on this uh, four-year rotation schedule that aligns with our policy on policy uh, policy on policies excuse me and so just here tonight to say for this year the ones that were up that um, didn't need any changes just a new signature from dr salins are here but again you all the community could always ask for a review of any of these even even though did this list get to they were the, was it at the cac at all this uh they had the the calendar Okay. The pol I did I I did not. Okay. Um, okay. Thank ask you. Ask about every individual one. So the ones that um, are up for review, those did. Okay. Thank you. Was there any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Okay, we're up for a break. Does anybody want it, or do you want to keep pressing on? Okay. <laughs> Good way to bypass the break. <laughs> okay, Ken, um, I get a motion to vote on the HR report that was presented in close. I make a motion that we approve the HR report that has been uh, reviewed by this board. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Also, can I get a motion to vote on the non public tuition that was presented in closed session? I make a motion we uh, approve the non public tuition to Benning School that was done in closed session. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Barraclo, the Central Office Building Award. All right, good evening, President Bennett, board members, Dr. Salen, executive team. I'm coming before you this evening to seek approval for the bid on the new Central Office Building. Uh, to give you a little bit of background on things, um, in November 2023, plans and specifications were made available for bid for the new Queen Anne's County Central Office Building. The project was advertised in the local paper for two consecutive weeks and on eMaryland Marketplace. 
on December 20th, 2023, bids were received with 10 pre-qualified firms submitting bid packages shortly after the 2 p.m. deadline for submission, QACPS staff opened and read aloud each bid. Bidders provided amounts for the base bid plus three alternates. The three alternates are described as alternate one, provide vandal film for the exterior windows and main vestibule glazing. This film is installed to protect interiors from vandalism and delay an attempted intrusion long enough for police to arrive. Alternate number two, provide lightning protection. This alternate will provide the building's electrical components with protection from lightning strikes. Alternate three, provide kitchen equipment. This alternate provides prep tables, three compartment sinks, hand sinks, refrigerators, warmers, and other equipment in the catering kitchen. A bid tab mm -hmm. of the bids received can be found on the next page of the yellow sheet. Um, as you can see, uh, all uh, the 10 bids are uh, across. Um, base bids are reflected and prices for each of the alternates are shown. Um, Doyle Construction submitted the lowest responsive responsible bid in the amount of 15 million. $951,401. Um, I also forgot to introduce in the audience, I also have Lee Edgar with the county and our architect, um, Jeremy Klein from WGM Architects. So, questions? Um, I just have, can you explain to me exactly what it is with the alternate? So, when the original base bid went out, why, it's like, why did we need alternate for these things? Are these just, items that we may not be doing? No, or? what we what we did was we created alternates um, similar to the way when, when we are required to bid a state funded project, the state requires about 10% of the project scope to be funded as bid alternates. And the, the, the thought process behind that is, is that you put everything in the base bid of the project that you have to have. Bid alternates are extras that you don't necessarily have to have to move into the building, to occupy the building, to operate the building. So the, the, the intent behind base bid and alternates is, is that if we get numbers that uh, from a budgetary standpoint are just at the, the budget from a base bid standpoint, we select none of the alternates or we kind of pick and choose what alternates we can afford to to, to afford based upon the budget. So these were selected um, early in the design phase and, and kind of chosen as things that we could potentially live without or buy separately outside of the construction contract or buy a year after construction was complete or five years after construction was complete. It, it's something that um, it just allows us to make sure that we can at least build the building and get, 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 get the building under roof. Okay, and with this amount, are there penalties if they start, if it starts running over? I know that we- Yes, we do have um, what we, what are referred to as liquidated damages. So within the uh, bid documents, we have stipulated a construction start date and a construction substantial completion date. And what's defined as substantial completion is also defined very, very well within the, the bid documents of what defines substantial completion. Um, and we have that date in the, in the contract documents and it will be within the contract as well. So once the contract is ex executed, they have a firm start date and a firm end date. And if they fail to meet that end date, there are liquidated damages that can be assessed against the contractor. Um, and, and keep in mind that if, if things if, if things happen during construction that do affect the contractor's ability to complete the work, you know, a, a very good example would be poor soils, for example. If they go out and they encounter poor soils and they have to start doing a lot of additional work, that additional work could potentially lead into additional time being added to the construction duration that would be uh, added via a change order. So that would then give him, you know, further time to complete the project, which, you know, it, it just, it's, it's treating them fairly because obviously when you start putting additional work on the folks, it does create more time for them to do this additional work and it wasn't built into the original schedule. Thank you. Sure. 
Um, I know you've had pre-bid meetings. You've had after the bids are all looked at, make sure everything's I's are d dotted and T's across, and everybody understands the complete bid. That's all been done. Correct. What we uh, what I uh, did was uh, the bid opening was at two o'clock. Um, uh, myself and, and others within the county, as well as the architectural team, uh, we we evaluated the bids that were submitted. Um, I typically give the contractor uh, the next day. I'll call them in the morning. I did call these. Uh, I did call Doyle Construction the next morning. I actually had a teams meeting with. Uh, two of their executive members, as well as their estimator, um, to confirm that um, they were comfortable with their number, that you know, they went back and looked at their scope packages, made sure that they had good coverage from all of their subcontractors, that they weren't missing anything. Um, it's, just, it, it's just giving them the opportunity to, you know, look at things and confirm that, you know, they didn't make a, a large mistake somewhere that they need to withdraw their number or something. So um, I, I've, I got a, a comfortable feeling with that meeting. And then um, as part of that meeting, um, I, I did require that they provide the letter from their surety company, which uh, is, is basically a notarized letter saying that they can provide the bond, the, the payment and performance bond for the project. Um, they're, they're required to provide that within two days after bid. Um, we received that on the 26th, which would have been the two days with, with considering Christmas in there. And um, in addition to that, we asked for a division by division breakdown of their bid. Uh, we received that also on the 26th. I sent that over to Jeremy, the, the architect. Um, he reviewed that. We've discussed it. The numbers that, that were presented in that as well, they, he, they confirmed that they're Pretty, pretty comfortable with that as well. I mean, they're, they're lower than what the estimates were shown, but again, their overall number is low. So within each division, they were within a few percent of where, where he thought they should be. So I think we're in, I think we're in great shape, to be honest with you. I wouldn't uh, even and say I heard that. you say they're, they can get their, they're bondable. It's a bond. Uh, absolutely, yes, yes. The project will be fully bonded, yes. Other questions? Yeah. I'll make a motion that we accept Dole construction for the new central office building for an amount of fifteen million nine hundred and fifty one thousand four hundred and one dollars. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Grow, you are up again. Again, John Gross, Supervisor of Accountability. Uh, tonight, I uh, bring uh, Policy 205, uh, Acceptable Use of Technology and Electronics, up for a vote. Um, we went through the first and second readings uh, with no comments. We still have no comment, um, so I bring uh, um, for action tonight. Any other questions? None. Make a motion to we accept use of technology electronics, uh, policy number 205. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Yes. And Go again? Ahead. Yes. <laughs> um, and I also bring policy 705, uh, student data governance and privacy. We had readings one and two with no comment and still no comment. So I bring it tonight for another vote. Any comments? Okay. I make a motion we uh, approve student data governance and privacy, <coughs> 705. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Berkeley. Oh, <laughs> you knew. All right. <laughs> Great. Just following along. Good <laughs> evening again. Uh, come before you tonight for the third read and approval of. Policy 215, Minority Business Enterprise Procedures for State-Funded Public Construction School Projects. Um, again, as, as I said, this is the third read for action, um, and we have received no, no comments. Any questions, comments? 
make a motion we uh, accept my business enterprise procedures for state funded public school construction projects policy number 215. Second. all those in favor aye, aye. aye. thank you thank you all right mr pender good evening president bennett dr salen board members executive team for the record my name is Sid Pender, Chief Operating Officer. I'm uh, before you tonight to seek approval for Diane Powers of the Bay Area Transportation LLC to purchase a new bus for the 2023-2024 school year to replace bus 1810. Um, next year will be the end of the 15 year cycle for this bus. Mm. Miss um, Powers is in an opportunity where a new bus was assigned somewhere else. The person did not want it. The opportunity is now for her to purchase it, even though it would be a, you know a year in advance. But when looking at that, you know we need to look at the supply and demand. So these kind of opportunities don't come along that often. So she's in a pre pretty good spot for that. It would be associated with a new PBA based upon the 23-24 school year. Yeah, when you said it was up next year, I was thinking we're just approving it because how long is it taking for um, it's well, I can tell you we placed an order and it took over a year to get them. Okay. Yeah, Another odd question this electric bus thing. Is that going away? <laughs> um, you don't want to comment. I know comment. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I, I'll Mr. just Pitt. say this for the infrastructure to be put in place. I don't see it happening. I mean, you know, could you imagine that the 28 buses or so that we have out to the warehouse. That's us. That's just mm -hmm. us. And let alone contractors. Every contractor having that ability at their house. I mean, in, you know, I don't foresee any grants we apply for it. Um, some of the larger counties get them, but I, I see it being a major roadblock coming down the road. So. I make a motion we approve Bay Area Transportation purchase the new bus. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yep. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Dr. Noel. No. Dr. Noel, sorry. <laughs> I'm still in holiday she's mode. In, she's in holiday mode. <laughs> Only in December. <laughs> Good evening, Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Salins and executive team. For the record, Michael Noel, Director of Human Resources. I come before you tonight to consider entering into a contract for contractual services with Smart Start Education. Ken Island High School has targeted school improvement funds that need to be used and um, the administration there has found this group uh, with Dr. Salen's assistance to find school day during the day tutoring. Uh, so we are going to contract with tutors. Ken Island also was not able to secure a physics teacher because physics teachers are one of those content areas that are near impossible to find. Very few colleges and universities have students going into physics and chemistries and things of that in the teacher field. Uh, so we are actually able to contract with a physics teacher for the second semester um, to solidify that content area at Ken Island High School. The um, the fiscal impact of this is not to exceed $100,000. It's two separate contracts, both of them under 50,000, but because it's with the same group, we wanted to bring that before the board for full transparency for this transaction. Yeah, just to, for everyone else that's may, that may be watching is I, I know that you've exhausted your mm -hmm. uh, search that we've looked at even at the Chesapeake and all the, the colleges and we've just not been able to find. Not well, it, was very to find. Late, yes. and it was very, very late in August, so we didn't really, it wasn't the hiring season. Mm -hmm. And so we have exhausted even well, no, local I just colleges. Didn't want to think that we had right, looked everywhere. Right. So. Um, but I'm very, um, you know, confident that when we post now in uh -huh. January, February for the upcoming school year that we'll be able to fill the position. It just wasn't good timing. It was not during the hire, typical hiring season. So Correct. I, I do feel that we'll be able to fill the position um, for next school year. Any questions, comments? I think a motion we approve uh, Smart Start Education. The total contract not to exceed 100,000. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Noll. All right. Thank you, Dr. Noll. Anyone signed up for public comment? 
Anyone? Okay. No one? Anyone? Okay. All right, future meetings and events. So the next one will be a budget work session at 4.30 on the 10th, is that correct? And then January 17th at 4.30 for oh. a budget work session. Also, no, the 17th has the 17th. been canceled. Okay, mm -hmm. so just January just 10th. January okay. 10th, Great. yeah. And then of course our February meeting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I get a motion to adjourn. So I move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming.